As the Aurora approached Planet 4546b with the primary objective of building a phase gate and the secondary objective to discover what happened to the Degasi, it encountered the quarantine enforcement platform. The black box data found upon exploring the Aurora describes what happened as the beam from this deadly weapon struck the huge capital ship. It tells us that a high velocity energy pulse was detected on the planet's surface. Shortly thereafter, a massive impact was detected, which compromised the 25 life pods on the starboard side of the vessel, along with all all outgoing communications. An emergency evacuation was then initiated, and all 25 life pods from the port side of the ship were launched successfully. Shortly thereafter, the Aurora collided with the surface of the planet with a massive force, and after only 8 hours, the only surviving person left on the planet was Riley Robinson. One of the questions I am most frequently asked is what happened to the other life pods that launched successfully from the Aurora? There were 50 total life pods on the Aurora, meaning that each life pod was designed to house roughly 3 of the over 100 150 people, 157 to be exact, on board the Aurora. 25 life pods on the starboard side were compromised when the ship was struck by the quarantine enforcement platform, but all 25 of the life pods on the port side launched successfully. However, the player can only find 9 destroyed life pods in Subnautica. Life pod 2 in the Blood Kelp Zone, Life pod 3 in the Kelp Forest, Life pod 4 floating upside down near the Aurora, Life pod 6 in the Grassy Plateaus, Life pod 7 in the Crag Field, Life pod 12 in the Bulb Zone, Life pod 13 in the Mushroom Forest, Life Pod 17 also in the Grassy Plateaus, and Life Pod 19 in the Sparse Reef. This means that only 10 of the 25 life pods, including your own, can be found within the crater. So what happened to all the other life pods that launched successfully from the Aurora? Let's go through all the different possibilities. The first possibility is that the beam from the quarantine enforcement platform could have damaged many of the life pods. The black box data tells us that life pods 1 through 25 all launched successfully. However, this does not mean none of the life pods were damaged in the process. It is highly likely that debris created by the beam striking the aurora damaged many of the life pods. In space, there is no air, meaning there is no air resistance to slow the debris down. So the huge amounts of debris created by the collision sent in all different directions at tremendous speeds. Due to Isaac Newton's first law of motion, never slowed down since there was nothing to decrease their speed. So when the beam shot by the quarantine enforcement platform, struck the aurora, thousands and perhaps millions of tiny bits of shrapnel were created, from the size of a pinhead to the size of a car, which were equally deadly, and it is highly likely that many life pods were struck by this shrapnel, damaging or maybe entirely compromising them. The debris could have damaged specific systems, for example life support, which would result in the crew inside suffocating, navigation, which could result in a few things we will discuss later, or the debris could have just cut a hole right into the life pod, causing everything inside to be sucked out into the vacuum of space, or even causing the crew members to be pierced by the tiny projectiles. This theory is further supported due to the huge debris field we can find upon launching the Neptune rocket in Subnautica that is also mentioned by the Sunbeam on multiple separate occasions. I think this is a highly likely possibility that makes a lot of sense. The second possibility is that, due to malfunction or the debris we discussed earlier, the life pods could have never even made it to the planet. This might mean the life pods and the crew inside were stranded in space, slowly suffocating to death as time progressed. It would be a terrifying way to go. Another interesting thing to think about is that since some life pods likely missed the planet altogether, they could have been captured by the gravity of one of the two moons, orbiting the planet, and landed on their surface. This is extremely interesting to think about, although it's likely that neither of the moons are habitable. But if they were, that would make a pretty interesting third Subnautica game. Another likely possibility is that some of the life pods simply burned up in the atmosphere. As a result of a malfunction or damage from the debris, the heat shield likely equipped on each life pod could have been compromised. And as a result, many life pods and all their inhabitants could have burned up in the atmosphere surrounding planet 4546b. Poor design of the life pods could have also been a factor as well. This theory is further supported by the voice log found when the player explores life pod 13, titled Life Pod 13 Emissary's Voice Log. Let's give a listen, shall we? the cherishers and sustainers of worlds give me this day my daily pleasures as I give to those who seek pleasures from me. External temperature approaching critical levels. Show me the path in life, truth, and love for mine is the power. I am the one on and off and on again. Impact imminent. Life is a game which the universe plays 
plays with itself. I am done playing as this bundle of flesh. Return me. While Emissary Kassar was hurtling down towards Planet 4546b, the temperature outside the life pod reached a critical state. Eventually, this resulted in all life support systems to fail, and the life pod to be completely compromised. It is likely multiple life pods had a similar thing happen to them, possibly more severely than what happened to Kassar. They could have been reduced to metal scrap, or could have been entirely consumed by fire during the journey down towards the planet's surface, which would explain the lack of wreckage. During the intro to Subnautica, we can witness a massive explosion as a result of the quarantine enforcement platform striking the aurora a few minutes prior. This explosion lights up the tiny spot of sky we can see through the life pod's hatch, and sends a huge shockwave through life pod 5. One possibility is that this humongous explosion could have completely vaporized, or damaged some life pods that ejected too late. Some could have been entirely compromised, while others could be damaged slightly, which could result in multiple different scenarios we will talk about later. Another possibility is that some life pods could have been destroyed upon colliding with the water. When you jump in a pool, the water acts as a really good cushion to prevent you from colliding with the floor of the pool. However, if you were traveling too fast, like in the case of these life pods, the water doesn't have time to move out of the way and cushion your fall. This means life pods colliding with the water is just like as if the life pods were colliding with concrete. At the end of Yaki Kassar's voice log, the life pod collides with the water, and the recording turns to static. This resulted in the death of Yaki, and the life pod being damaged severely. It is possible that other life pods also collided with the water too fast as a result of a malfunction or damage from debris. Traveling through an atmosphere is very complicated and there's a lot of things that can go wrong. The impact could have been so destructive that the life pod could have been completely reduced to metal scrap, which could explain the lack of wreckage. One counter argument would be that the life pods may have some sort of system to slow themselves down, but once again, a malfunction or more likely impacts from debris could have caused those systems to fail. There are many other possible ways that life pods could have been destroyed. The first is that the life pods could have landed on land, which would have likely obliterated them. Or the life pods could have landed just fine, but they were torn completely apart by hostile fauna and reduced to metal scrap. Multiple life pods could have collided with meteoroids while they were in space, or could have been damaged by radiation from the system star. 4546A. All of these could result in the life pod being lost in space, destroyed completely, or could cause one of the few possibilities we're about to talk about next. One of the most interesting possibilities is that many of the life pods could have missed the crater entirely and landed in the void. What would it be like to have escaped the aurora safely, landed in your life pod, climbed up your ladder and saw nothing but deep water below you, not to mention the ghost leviathans that patrol the area? It would have been truly terrifying. One interesting thing to point out is that 80% of the life pods that landed there would have sunk. 8 of the 10 life pods we know of sank to the ocean floor. Likewise, 80% of the life pods would also sink, which is pretty terrifying to think about. I will point out that the life pods may have sunk after they were destroyed and reduced to how we find them today, so this number may not be precise. But regardless, sinking slowly through the dark void with ghost leviathans all around you would have been terrifying. There are two options here for the life pods that landed in the void. Either you die from the ghost leviathans eating you, or you slowly die from starvation or from thirst. I'm not entirely sure which one is the better option, but it's pretty safe to say that if any life pods landed in the void, which I think is pretty likely, they would have been screwed. Another possibility is that some life pods could have landed too close to the aurora, and been obliterated, vaporized, or reduced to metal scrap when the aurora exploded later on. Or maybe some life pods landed where the aurora was going to land, and were completely crushed by the aurora. Or possibly some life pods were destroyed by the massive impact of the aurora crashing onto planet 4546b. Some life pods could have also landed on top of the aurora, but it's pretty unlikely. The most likely of all these possibilities is that it is a combination of the previous possibilities that explains what happens to all the life pods in Subnautica. Maybe some of the life pods were stranded in space, others burned up in the atmosphere, and others still landed in the void. I think each possibility has at least one life pod that fell victim to it, but who knows for sure. 
Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Did I miss anything? Do you have any video ideas? Any questions or concerns? Please let me know. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, it's free. Plus it helps me a ton. Help me reach 25,000 subscribers as fast as possible. Also, please check out my other Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero content. You might like it. Be sure to check out my Discord server and Twitch channel. The links are in the description. If you want to be awesome, please support me on Patreon. Thanks to my patrons, Sir Lord Mister, Electrobyte, Skeptic, Baby Yoda, and Kinocho. Become a patron and support today. The link is in the description as well. And I will see you guys in the next video.